as much sleep as we think we do. And then they said, think about what you could do in that nighttime. Well, they said, you can look at the stars, which I did. I learned to walk out on my deck and look at the stars, and then eventually I fell asleep. Or you could do various things during those phases of, quote, insomnia. It's just your mind is active. It doesn't mean you can't sleep. It means you don't want to sleep. It means your mind doesn't want to go to sleep. Your mind is working on a problem. Do you understand that? Now, once you understand that your mind is working on a problem, you don't need to take drugs to fall asleep because you don't really need to sleep. Ask a soldier how much sleep he really needs. Ask the soldiers who come back from Afghanistan if they're not up for three days in a row or more. They don't die from it. So what I'm saying is there are many things you can do to keep yourself going in times of stress or in times of need that don't require, you know, artificial crutches such as drugs and medication. So then I learned at that time a certain phrase, and I have to wrap this up at this junction. I learned a simple thing, New York thing. Every dog has his day. I learned that from gamblers that I, I knew, street kind of guys that would say, yeah, Mike, every dog has his day. You ever hear that phrase? I never knew what it meant. I mean, don't worry about it, man. One day you'll find that day that's going to be your day. And that comes from a religious point of view. For there is no man who does not have his hour and no thing that does not have its place. What does that mean? I'll tell you when I return right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O, all based upon the teachings of Christianity. Do you understand how this music originated? It didn't originate from the gutter. It originated from a higher plane, and that's where it takes you. Do you get it? Why our society is dying? <clears throat> the entire society has been pulled down to the lowest common denominator, the gutter. The gutter dictates all of our popular culture. The gutter dictates the networks, selections. The gutter dictates virtually everything in our society. So, again, I have to go back to my primary point. I'm in the media. I've been in it for 21 years. I've been writing, I've been publishing books since, I've had books published, rather, since 1972. I had my first bestseller in 1972, Earth Medicine, Earth Foods, about North American Indian medicines and foods. Macmillan, 1972. Think about that one. I, I have to tell you, I mean, I've been around a while doing a lot of writing. I wrote before then. I started writing in the 1960s. And... My journals will be published from the 1960s. Only one year of them, a few years of them, will be coming out sometime in the spring from World and Daily. I have a lot of books coming out this year. And it's a collection of all of the years of building up and coming to fruition all at once almost. Not, uh, you know, anyway, I don't want to go into why, how, whatever. What I'm saying is inspiration, inspiration, inspiration. And I'm trying to inspire you without res resorting to the anger, rage, Indignation, trying to use love, hope, humor, not easy to do. Not in society that is used to responding to things that make them angry. A society used to responding to things that make you, that enrage you or get you so indignant you don't know what to do with yourself. I don't want, I don't want to let it happen because it'll destroy me and probably destroy many listeners to go down that road. So I'm going to keep trying to retain strength. While, all right, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Maybe it's too highbrow for the average Dem Repub out there. I don't know, but I got to go where my head goes, my heart goes, and here's where my head is today. Here it is, here's where I am today. We're at a juncture in America where I don't think we've ever been. A juncture where uh, Facebook is seen as an arm of the government. How else do you explain the fact that a board member of the Anti-Christian Liberty Union, the worst organization in the history of America, puts a Facebook statement up that all Trump supporters should be killed? It's in writing. And Zuckerberg's little fascist dummies didn't take it down. While I put up pictures of actual signs that actual Muslims actually carried outside an actual Danish embassy, in 2006, and they removed it from Facebook. So you, you say you're not at war. You are at war. They own the media, though. They, they own the media. They own the words. They own the images. 
and take a look at the sad sacks who run Hollywood. Look at these sad creatures, these powerful men who have the power to shape the minds of America and the world. Look how they're failing us. Instead of helping us fight this dictatorship, they are the dictatorship. They are the Judenrat. I'm sorry to say it. It's a very, very tough thing to say, and it's aimed only at a certain audience out there. They're working for the enemies of freedom itself through the images that they put out, through the stories that they don't tell rather than the stories they do tell, and the stories that they do tell through film, they do things that you can't believe to the human spirit. But what's the point of talking about it? I have no power over them. I'm not a movie maker. I'm only a talk show host and a writer. So I ask you again, I'll go back to the calls in one minute. I'm going to get to the calls right now. I haven't had one call in an hour and a half. Uh, what would you do if you had my microphone, the power I have as a broadcaster and best-selling author from this day forward? How would you inspire people without using anger, rage, indignation? Could you use love, hope, and humor? Could you? To, to inspire people to go on? How do you explain the fact that Al-Qaeda or one of the other Muslim hate groups, these terror groups that do such horrible things, put out a magazine called Inspire on the Internet that encourage people to join their sick organizations to go over and rape young girls, and etc. I can't even tell you what they do. If you want to hear what they do, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for a moment. Yesterday, a leader of the Yazidi people went before Congress, thank God for the Republicans who invited Mirza Ishmael, chairman of the Yazidi Human Rights Organization International, to try and tell the world what Obama is ignoring. Listen to clip three. Are you ready for this? You better hold on to your seats. Play it. Thousands of young Yazidi women, girls, and even children, who, as I speak, have been enslaved and forced into sexual slavery. These girls are subjected to daily multiple rapes by ISIS monsters. According to many escaped women and girls whom I talked to in northern Iraq, the abducted GSD, mostly women and children, number over 7,000. Some of those women and girls have had to watch seven, eight, and nine-year-old children bleed to death before their eyes after being raped by ISIS militia multiple times a day. I know his English isn't as good as that of uh, Barack Obama. I realize he's not as charming. But listen to clip four. I miss he mothers. better English. Whose children were torn from them by ISIS. These same mothers came to plead for the return of their children. Only to be informed that day, the mothers had been fed the flesh of their own children by ISIS. Children murdered, then fed to their own mothers. Did you hear what he just said? The mothers come to plead for the return of their children. They're given a meal, and then these monsters tell them with a smirk that you've just eaten your own child at the meal. It's beyond anything that Hitler even did. What's going on right now in this time, and liberals choose to hate supporters of Donald Trump. I, I don't have words for what I need to say, so I'm going in a totally other direction. You heard the man's speech? I hope you heard it. I hope you can spread the message of hatred, the hatred that's coming from ISIS and being covered up by the administration. Spread it. Go spread that message. Pray, spread that sound bite around because this man is telling you what's really going on, and I have nothing but but contempt for the media for hiding this. They're hiding it. They won't let you hear it. So it comes back again. We circle back to the question. Can love, hope, and humor save this world when such monsters are doing such things and the government media complex is hiding them? I don't know. I don't even have an answer. So I'm going to go to the callers now for a few minutes. I'm going to start with San Francisco, where I live and work. KSFO Mike. Go ahead. What would you do if you had my microphone and my abilities? Mike, are you there on line six or are you gone? Dead in the water. Fang, it's what I love. The greatest call screening in the history of radio. Line number nine, Peter on WABC. We'll try you. Go ahead, please. I'm not getting any calls. Okay, so we have another technical. Are you there, Peter? 
Yes, can you hear me, Michael? Go, yeah, go ahead. My call screener should have told you you're, you're on, but go ahead. Jesus said the truth would set you free, and that's what you do. That's what's inspirational. If I had your microphone, I would direct people to your show. The media not putting you on is the biggest indictment against them of all. I uh, spent three years in Afghanistan as a member of the Fighting 69th Infantry here in New York, and you're an inspiration. Just like everyone who listens to you, it's like talking to Jeremiah, Jeremiah or Isaiah. Literally, every day we get that opportunity, and to be able to thank you over the air in public is an honor to me. No, no, the honor is mine, and I'm not saying that to be polite. You're the soldier, you're the warrior, you're on the front lines, you're the ones taking on these animals, not me. You know who these animals are better than anyone listening to the show does, except soldiers who face these animals in combat. Peter, I'm sending you a Christmas gift, which is the only thing I can send you other than my respect, a copy of Government Zero. Thanks for your service to the United States of America. Now we go to Dallas, Texas. WBAP Line 2, Brad, thanks for holding. You're on the air. What's on your mind? How you doing, Dr. Savage? Thank you so much for having me. Man, uh, you inspire me. I'm an African-American male. I'm 32 years old, and I was I taken by ambulance when I was driving truck in 2009, and the ambulance driver had your show playing. First time I ever heard it. I've been a Democrat my entire life. I was raised that way, being African-American. We was taught to be a Democrat, and after I heard your show, I literally looked for you for weeks after that just to hear who you were, hear what you were about. And following that, I enrolled myself in school. I was a college dropout. I enrolled in school, and here I am now, starting my about to start my third year of my doctorate program. If so I had to call, I had to tell you thank you because you've inspired me, not only me, but also my my wife of ten years. And so we're just happy. But we take a lot of heat uh, being in you know you know African American. We take unbelievable. You know, Brad, you're, I'm I'm floored by what you just said. I want to go back to the beginning. You were in an ambulance as what a driver or a patient? No, I was a patient. I was having gallstone issues. I just found out I had gallstones. Ah, working and, and while you were being rushed to the hospital, the ambulance driver had the Savage show on. Is that what, is that what you said? That's exactly right. Your show. And yeah, I'm you know, normally it would give liberals gallstones listening to me. In, in your case, it helped you move them out of your body, I guess. Right, that's exactly right. It, it literally motivated me. I mean, hearing, hearing you were just inspiring that day. And it motivated me tremendously. But, but, but Brad, without, without indulging myself, what is it that you heard that inspired you to go from truck driver to doctoral student? What is it that you heard? The number one thing that you said, that you said, America, you need to wake up. You said you guys have been asleep. You were saying we were dormant and that we need to wake up. And I asked myself, have I been dormant? Do I need to wake up? I, I didn't even think I could agree with that. And so I spent... Three weeks looking for who you were in your show, and I and I listened to you to be the opposition. And through the three weeks that we listened to you, you I'm a I'm a convert. I'm a New Testament savage. <laughs> oh, God, well, <laughs> that's nice to hear. Well, good luck with your studies, Brad. I'm sending you my book for Christmas as a token of my appreciation for your willingness to stay on the line and basically tell your story uh, during this caller phase of the program. Very interesting the way you touch people. So I say, I go back, I, I ask a question, what would you do if you had my microphone, if you had this power for one hour, one day, what would you do? And he said to me, you've already done it. You don't have to do anything different. So that's an interesting statement. Then I got a, an email from, I hope I can mention Craig Smith's name. He's my sponsor for 16 years with Swiss America the greatest gold company in the world. 16 years he supported the show through thick and through thin. Through every tribulation I've gone through, he's been, been there with me. And he sends me an email. He said, my God, Savage, what a word picture about a humble tailor fighting to save and feed his family and ultimately save future Jews. I would love to read that book. Your statement in this segment affected me like none other. And he's been listening to me forever. And he says, Michael, I sit here in my cabin at 7,000 feet in such deep thoughts Thoughts, I never knew I had the ability to reach your gift, says Craig. It's amazing. I didn't write that. I didn't ask him to write it just to get a plug on the air. I just tell you that people do listen, and they do hear. And some of them do actually listen to what I'm saying, and they listen to it, and they change their lives, change for the better. It's a shame that we live in a world where you can castigate a man for 
his thoughts 